Good morning from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, where the SpaceX Crew Dragon, poised on Space Launch Complex 40, is set to take flight for the first time during what is called a pad abort test. This test will not have any crew members aboard the spacecraft, but it will simulate an emergency escape from the launch pad in the unlikely case of a booster failing at liftoff or another scenario that would threaten astronauts inside the spacecraft. We're uh, about 24 minutes, 12 seconds away from the test. Everything is on schedule for a T0 at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. This test will see the Crew Dragon spacecraft and trunk, together about 20 feet tall, fly on the power of eight Super Draco engines. These hypergolic fueled Super Dracos each produce 15,000 pounds of thrust, and they're expected to burn for about six seconds and lift the spacecraft about 5,000 feet above the launch pad before it parachutes into the Atlantic Ocean about a mile offshore from the launch pad. And the test will last only about a minute and a half. That's what you would expect because SpaceX is trying to show just how fast it can get astronauts away from a dangerous situation. Here's a video of a demonstration of a pad aboard profile with two engines, with two Super Draco engines that were fired recently at um, the Texas McGregor facility, the rocket development facility of SpaceX. And that will give you some idea of what uh, awaits us in about uh, 22 minutes, 40 seconds from now. Weather forecasters from the U.S. Air Force 45th Weather Squadron continue to predict a 70% chance of favorable weather during the test. Right now, there are no uh, launch commit criteria issues. Everything is go. There is a tropical low in the vicinity, but it continues to move off to the north and uh, as the day progresses, should there be a need, we expect that the, uh, that the low will pull away and all the weather will get even better than it is right now. But again, right now, we're completely go. No issues whatsoever. We're at T minus 21 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. This is Dragon Test Control. This is Dragon Test Control at T minus 20 minutes, 7 seconds and counting, and everything is go. Dragon is powered up. 
There are no weather concerns. Everything is looking very good, and we're very pleased right now to be joined by Eric Bowe, NASA astronaut who's been an astronaut since 2000 and a veteran of two space shuttle flights. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. It's good to be for, here, Mike. Thank you for taking time to be with us today. This is a, a milestone day for the commercial crew program and, and for NASA as we move forward in uh, uh, our uh our campaign, I guess, to return launches uh, to American soil, U.S. astronauts going up to the space station. Can you tell us a little bit about what, uh, why you're here today and what this means to you? Oh, well, we're here to, you know, this is, as you said, to kind of some of the initial testing that we're getting uh, started. You know, we're getting to the hardware phase, you know, before we've been doing a lot of engineering over the last few years. And you know, the, these companies, SpaceX, has been working on this. And so this is one of the first uh, big tests, you know, as we move forward with the, the chance to put humans back into space from uh, Florida. So from, uh, from an astronaut's perspective, how important is the ability to have a, uh, a crew um rescue capability that's it's a great capability it's one of the things the shuttle didn't have where you can actually be on the pad and essentially it's kind of like an ejection seat is in an airplane you have the ability to leave uh, the pad sitting in the capsule and the capsule would uh, come off and land so it's a it's a, a great capability and you know of course flight test is an important part of this to to make sure we we have the engineering models but you really need the flight test to to verify the things that you've done uh, you, you know figured out looked at analytically so with this uh, test, um, if all goes well today, um, we'll be one step closer to uh, to getting to fly again. Um, you looking forward to returning to uh, to space? Absolutely, it would be it be a great uh, thing. I'd love to fly one of these uh, vehicles, one of the commercial crew vehicles coming up. Uh, it'll be nice to start launching again for Florida. You know, as you know now, our crews are launching out of uh, Kazakhstan on uh, the Soyuz. So it'll be nice to be flying on uh, U.S. space vehicles again. Well, we're looking forward to it and uh, really appreciate you dropping by today. Absolutely. Glad to do it. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Have a good day. This is Dragon Test Control at T minus 17 minutes, 8 seconds, and counting. NASA's space flight specialists have been working with SpaceX throughout the design of the Crew Dragon and will be analyzing the results of the flight test along with SpaceX. The results will be used to help inform a host of computer models and plans before the spacecraft's final version moves into production. Today, there are about a half dozen NASA managers with the SpaceX team in the Launch Control Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, including the Commercial Crew Program's Kathy Leaders and the Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations, Bill Gerstenmeyer. And another handful of NASA representatives are here in the Launch Vehicle Data Center at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Hangar AE, including engineers who have been working with SpaceX on the development of the Crew Dragon and the Falcon 9 rocket since 2012, as well as Eric Bow and four or five other members of NASA's Astronaut Corps. The teams want to see how the Crew Dragon's eight engines interact together, how fast they can lift the eight-ton spacecraft off the launch pad, and what kind of acceleration the abort system would place on the astronauts. Inside the Crew Dragon, the abort system is integrated into the side of the spacecraft instead of on top, which has happened with previous spacecraft. The ability to lift the astronauts and crew members out of harm's way is vital for the next generation of piloted spacecraft, and that's why NASA certification contracts include the abort capability requirements. This is an important step in returning launches to U.S. soil, and it fits right into NASA's journey to Mars, launching astronauts to the International Space Station, where the one-year mission is underway. 
The ISS is uh, NASA's key to exploration, and it really is the linchpin connecting the commercial crew program with the ability to launch astronauts to the station with our future exploration goals and the journey to Mars. We're about a minute and a half away from the clear-to-launch pole that will be conducted by SpaceX launch conductor Aaron Beck, she and launch director Kiko Donchev are overseeing all the operations today and will be standing by for that poll at T minus 13 minutes. We're at T minus 14 minutes, 18 seconds, and counting. This is Dragon Test Control. This is Dragon Test Control at T minus 13 minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. Standing by for a poll for a go for launch from launch conductor Aaron Beck. All stations, going to go for terminal count, beginning with Mission Assurance. Mission Assurance is go. DC. DC is go for terminal count. GC. GC is go. SIS-1. SIS-1 is go. SIS-2. SIS-2 is go. CC. CC go. Nav. Nav is go. Flight software. Flight software go. Mission software. Mission software is go. IT. IT is go. Recovery. Recovery go. RC. RC go. OSM. OSM go. Rock. Rock is go. LD. LD is go pending that we uh, resolve our range weather uh, field mill rule here and uh, we don't violate it in the near term. Copy. LC is go. DC, you are go to enable the terminal count auto sequence. If a no-go is required, we will call within the time to protect, T minus 3 minutes, 30 seconds. All stations, terminal count auto sequence is enabled. T minus 12 minutes and counting, and as you heard from the poll, all stations are go. At this time, there are no weather constraints. There is a cell that is moving into the vicinity of the launch pad from the northeast as part of this low-pressure system. As it moves closer, it is dissipating. It is not expected to produce any rain, but it is uh, potentially able to trigger the electrical field mill instruments in the area. But as of right now, everything is go. The Crew Dragon spacecraft has been outfitted with 270 sensors and will be carrying a human-sized test dummy inside. The sensors will measure acceleration and other forces throughout the test. And after the completion of the test, recovery teams will retrieve the Crew Dragon from the ocean and send it back to Texas to the SpaceX facility where it will be closely assessed and refurbished. This test is one of the milestones NASA's commercial crew program and SpaceX agreed to as part of a development effort for a privately owned and operated crew transportation system that can safely, reliably, and cost-effectively carry crews to and from low Earth orbit.